Contrary to what a lot of fitness influencers are currently saying, ice baths can be utilized to maximize muscle gains. Oh, that hurts. Uh, that was really good, bro. Dude, that was really good. Holy oh, shit. Ice bass for muscle games. You know what? It's You're here, crazy. Here's what annoys me. Uh, well, <laughs> here's one thing that annoys me. There's a lot of things that annoy me about fitness influencers uh, and, you know, people on social media is that they don't, they don't look at the full picture. They look at one thing and then they, uh, they don't realize that you could use something in a way to maximize progress and don't just look at it as a potential negative. So let me, I'll be more clear. Ice baths reduce inflammation. Inflammation or the signal for inflammation is part of the muscle building process. So if you use ice baths often, you reduce that signal and you could potentially build less muscle. So everybody's like, don't do ice baths because you're not going to build as much muscle. Um, here's why that's stupid. Because, uh, and you guys will know that you guys know this because you guys know how to program workouts. If you have a tool that could potentially lower inflammation and speed up recovery, that allows you to increase volume and frequency. And now you could do more work mm -hmm. and get better results. Now, why would more work give you better results? Because there's value in practicing exercises frequently. And the limiting factor is always recovery. Like if you could practice deadlifting 10 times a day and recover from it, you would get so good at deadlifting so quickly. But the limiting factor is always going to be recovery. Well, what if we had a tool that allowed us to work out harder, more often, and longer so we could utilize that practice and get better and more proficient at these amazing exercises uh, more rapidly? Well, we do have that tool. It's called an ice bath. So it's not as clear cut as, hey, reduces the muscle building signal, don't do it. It's like reduces the muscle building signal Wow, how can I use this to my advantage? Man, nuance hurts my bro brain. Yeah, it does. It's it does. days like this that I'm reminded why I like you so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, but this is, you know, you've heard me say this already several times on the podcast lately because I'm just, I'm so annoyed by this messaging that, and, and by the way, Lane says this really well, right? Even though I think he's actually one of the people that did this, is you can find a study for almost any, to prove almost any point that you want. Right. So if you want to find something, <clears throat> To say to like like a trend is going crazy, and by the way, this is the social media game now, right? Is to counter whatever is trending because then you can hop on the wave. That's right. So there's mm -hmm. this massive wave of like everybody finally getting on board and realizing, oh wow. Which by the way, people like Wim Hof have been touting for well over a decade now of the the benefits of it. And there's great documentaries on it, all kinds of great stuff That's around right. it. And it's finally getting popularity. Now it's got all this popularity. Now it's starting to go viral. Everybody that's doing all these ice bath challenges yeah. and all this stuff like that. And then here comes the, the other way, right? So, oh, okay, that's trending now. Let me find a study that will shit on this, this new thing that everybody's talking about and let me make a case on why it's going to hurt your gains. Yeah. And so- now you have people And so doing what that. we're doing is we're playing 3D chess. We're mm. waiting for the counter to the counter and then we're going to counter. <laughs> we're going to counter the counter's <laughs> yeah. counter. That's right. Yeah. No, I mean look, here here's a deal like um when you're when you understand how to program workouts, there's a lot of factors that you want to or pieces that you move in order to maximize progress. And being able to speed up recovery and lower inflammation is a piece that allows you to increase frequency, increase volume, increase intensity. Is there vol is there value in doing doing those things? Absolutely. Yeah, you get really good at skills. You get really good at skills. Like you're able to do more more often and recover and heal faster. Is that now for sports? This is obviously a no brainer. This is a no brainer. Like if I could practice my my sport more often, I'm going to get better at it faster. So ice baths become extremely valuable. But with muscle building, for some reason, it becomes this like black or white muscle building signal uh, lowers muscle building signal, good or bad. The number one limiting factor to uh, always across the board to somebody's ability to build muscle always is they're hitting the, the recovery wall. Like how much can I do? How much can I play with recovery and adaptation? Yeah. Where's that line? Uh oh, I did too much. I'm not doing enough. Well, I mean, if you have something that allows you to move that meter so that now you can do more, 
Um, now you've got a tool that allows you to, you know, like I said, yeah. increase some of those other factors and get uh, your progress. Uh, I mean, you know, to accelerate. This is a great point to bring up because I mean, it's commonly accepted that if you're redlining, like say your your double days for football, or you have like a um, you're playing a sport that's like super demanding and you're yeah. always doing high intensity exercises. And and this is just a way to to add a bit of longevity to right. your career without getting hurt. Like everybody can accept and, and get behind that and support that, but you're manipulating uh, that ability to, to lower down that inflammation. And so to, to do that in a way where it's advantageous towards muscle building is totally feasible. Yeah. So if you're smart, so like if you're like, if you're, if you don't know this, um, and you're doing a workout and you add, and you're already like recovering and ad ad adapting well, and then you add an ice bath, you might see reduced uh, muscle growth. By the way, it's, tr it's almost trivial, but fine. You're, you're going to see some reduced signaling for muscle growth. But if you're smart and you're doing the same workout, you add an ice bath, then you add more exercise or you add more practice or you add more volume or you add more intensity. Right. Now, not only do you offset the lowered muscle building signal, but you have the added value of being able to do more. Being able to practice, and then you can always more. ramp up your intensity totally. and, and add that type of inflammation in order to really hyper focus or, on that. Or as you already acquired this new skill, or you use it as a pre workout instead of a post thing. Oh, that's there you great. Go. So use it as as a, which is how I use it. I use it before. I don't use it after I work out. It's before I work out. I'm going to steel man this this argument too with another angle. Uh, one of the uh, there's no argument right about the the importance of re uh, recovery and sleep when it comes to right. building muscle right we all know that's actually at the top of the priority list one of the most valuable things that Katrina and I have done and she's really good about noticing this when I'm tossing and turning and my brain is going like crazy is my breathing and getting me to calm my breathing all down right. to get me in that state where my body will go fall into a sleep versus it going like crazy because I don't even recognize how I'm breathing and she can she hears it and catches it before I catch mm. it on myself. This practice has got me so good at being able to recognize that and then shift because yeah, the, you have to to be able to hang out. Yes, on the ice for if two you minutes. sit in yeah. that cold ass water for two to five minutes. You have trained yourself to be able to calm your breathing down yep. and under control in under a crazy stress like that. I, obviously, I'm not in a laid yep. in bed in an ice bath, and so it's even easier when so when I become aware of yep. oh my god, I'm sitting here chest breathing right now. Let me calm it down, and then I relax. So now you're in a highly intensified situation, and to be able to find – obviously, this applies easily to athletics and when you're in a sporting event. Yeah. And the highest performers out there are the ones who are have the ability to stay calm under totally. that crazy, surmountable amount of pressure. Uh, and so to be able to train that with the ice uh, is incredibly valuable. Yeah. You know, they you did a great study on that. You know, they did a great study on some – they did, like, some basketball players. They did think they did some – downhill skiers and they took these like gold medalists professional athletes and the, the the most common theme all of them in those crazy high pressure moments like game on the line got to hit a free throw oh, or sure. something like that going downhill to hit a triple backflip crazy stuff like that is their heart rate it yep. was like almost a, like a resting it's heart lower. rate, yeah, which is crazy people, to think yeah. you're in the middle of a sport, like a high intensity sport and your heart rate, anybody's done anything even remotely close to that crazy and stressful. Most of us are like heart is pounding and racing, but the best of the best have that ability to stay calm in those Look, moments. I, I'm sure you guys have experienced this. I know I did when I uh, competed in uh, like in grappling sports. When I would first start competing, I'd get so nervous that I'd exhaust myself. Yeah. Faster than I did. Burn so I much energy. Yeah, like I'd start the match and I'd be like, you know, 30 seconds in and I'm dead. I'm like, man, I can go and and train with guys for 10 minutes without getting tired. It was because I was so ramped up. So, I mean, that's a skill that can benefit, potentially benefit your athletic performance, benefit your ability to recover. You know, it's not, it's never black and white. This is the thing that yeah. people need to understand. For example, I'll use a silly example, right? Like, okay, generally studies show that eating a high protein diet builds more muscle. Well, what if you have, for whatever reason, high protein diets affect your digestion poorly? Well, then it's not a great muscle building strategy. In fact, a lower protein diet is probably going to help you build more muscle because you're healthier, right? Health is another thing that we need to take into consideration. Poor health, you don't build as much muscle as good health. That's another thing that you want to consider. So it's never that black and white. So I, you know, I waited because I see, you know, you know, ice baths, yeah. great, you know, benefits, health, you know, benefits. And then people went a little too crazy in that direction. Everybody's like, oh no, it lowered. Here's a couple studies that shows that you might build less muscle, therefore never ice bath. I'm like, okay, you guys are, this, that's not, as somebody who designs workout programs, I take a tool like that 
And I don't say this isn't good. I say, how can I use this? Right. Yeah. Oh, this lowers inf the inflammatory. Yeah. Where process? does the supply best? Totally. And again, like there's a lot of value in being able to practice a movement more frequently because you're get you get better at it and you can utilize its benefits uh more uh you know more readily and you can tap into its ability to make you stronger it's just you know don't forget that strength training exercises are skills and a lot of your ability to extract the benefit of an exercise is how well you could do it mm -hmm. somebody who could do a deadlift really well is going to be able to extract more benefit than someone who does it poorly they're going to be able to generate more force they're going to have less injury what makes them better at doing the deadlift? They practiced it. They practiced it more often. I so. find it's the same clown saying the same thing too the, about the deadlift and the squat. Like people, <laughs> oh yeah, it's the same. You know, it's the hard shit, and every it's so easy for those things to go viral and people to jump on board because they all didn't want to do it in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Saying, I don't want to do no deadlift. I didn't want to do no squat. They're hella hard to do. So let's. So as soon as yeah, I find one something, study comes out. Yes, yes. So I glom yeah. onto that right away. Same thing with the ice baths. Ice baths are hard. They're difficult. They're not easy to do. So oh great, somebody told me that it, they're worthless and it's uh -huh. not. It's going to hurt my gains. That's why I don't do it. Yeah. Not because it's fucking hard. Today's program giveaway, MAPS Aesthetic. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We are also uh, have a sale this month that's going to be ending in 48 hours. So there's only two days left. MAPS Anabolic is 50% off and MAPS Split is 50% off. If you're interested, you have to click on the link below to get yourself signed up. So it's the link in the description below. All right, back to the show. Anyway, speaking of gains, Adam, I got to ask you about your diet and workout. Your body is changing every day. It's pretty annoying to watch. <laughs> what's going, what's the next step? What are your He's steps right now? He's about to sing John Mayer to you. Yeah, so, wow. uh, <laughs> That's a wonderland. Wonderland. <laughs> so I, I was waiting for that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I, um, that was very I'm, I'm just about <laughs> to, I, I, this is the most in, intuitive eating, intuitive training, um, I've ever done to like get into the shape that I am now and to continue. And I kind of wanted to see that. I was like, you know, I always tell you like, ah, I'm more of the tracking guy. And I'm like, let me see how much I can just do this intuitively before I really start to get granular. Right. And that's served me up until about this point right now. I kind of feel like I'm in this little, my first like little plateau on the mm. journey. It's been, like you said, I felt like week over week, I've been improving, improving, improving. And that's purely been out of just intuitive training, intuitive eating, listening to my body and, and trying to figure out what I should do every day. So I just started to kind of track protein and see, uh, now granted, when I say I'm intuitive eating, I already know my behaviors around protein. And so I already uh, consciously made sure I started going after. You're protein. coming from a point of experience and knowledge yeah. yeah you can't have like your intuition without experience is nothing it's right <laughs> so i so there so even though i'm not tracking i already know my old behaviors and patterns when i when i am off the wagon or i'm not really like hardcore consistent or really dieting or anything like that i know my tendency is to meal skip to not get enough protein i know that that's one of the first things that i, I need to do so right away i already st started eating breakfast right away like so the very one of the very first things i did to introduce was and it's so easy for me when we get here is the creatures of habit it's got 30 30 to 32 grams of protein in it so just by adding that you're already ahead yeah i'm already starting to move in the right direction have you done the two packets yet together? so i just did that the other night oh you did yeah so i did that for a night snack i actually had the munchies and i'm like dude what can i eat right now and i'm like oh you know what? i'm gonna let me go try and eat two packets i've heard sal do that before and 60 grams of protein it huh? was and it actually you know what because it's the plant protein i actually think that it sits all right on my side if i were to do a double dose of whey protein uh, I would, it would, yeah. it, I would be up, my stomach would be upset or I would be on the toilet shortly after it did not bother me whatsoever. So I definitely noticed a difference, um, in doing that. So that's become a staple creatures of habit is like almost every single morning for me. And then I have like a, a second meal, a, like late breakfast, early lunch, and I'm bringing my meals right now. So, and I'm, and I'm, I'm not weighing, I'm not like weighing and measuring exactly how much rice, how much, but I, again, been doing this so long. If I had to guess, I'm probably eating eight to 10 ounces of meat paired with a rice, a quinoa pasta. What are you aiming for grams of protein wise? So I, 
I now that I'm gonna start tracking, I want to be at 200. 200 is hard though. It's hard, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, that's what I try to hit. Yeah. So yesterday was the first day I really tracked, and I and I was only landing about 160, and I would say that was probably a normal day of what I've been eating like. So I already know that I'm still I still have room to go with the mm. with the protein, which is why we I talk about that so much on the shows. I just don't think that a lot of people and that every meal I've got I'm eating protein based. It's either a 30 something gram you know, protein packed uh, oatmeal, or it's a eight ounces of chicken and rice. Like it's crazy how much you have to do in order to hit that and hit that consistently. I've only been able to do it by adding two shakes a day. I, it's so hard with food because it's so satiating. Yeah. And then I just started, um, a, a different peptide, uh, tesofensin, which is a, it's a serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. It's like a cognitive booster. It's also people use for fat loss because it, it um, suppresses appetite and it does suppress appetite. So I don't know if this is one, I do like the mental aspect of it, although the energy might be a little too high because um, I, I notice it's harder for me to go to sleep, but we'll see if that settles. But the appetite dropping plus trying to hit 200 grams of protein, I'm like choking my food down. So I'm going to well, give it a couple that's weeks the reason, to see if it Okay, so I know I mentioned the other day about- I could see how it could be beneficial to someone who overeats, but uh, like this is, it's I don't know if it's going to work for me. Yeah, you know, I, I, yeah, I brought up how I wanted to try Ozempic because of all the, you know, hoopla around it right now. So but, you can comment on it. Yeah, so I can comment on it, but I don't want to do it right now because I know I'm on this path of like trying to get enough protein in right now and that'll just yep. be counterproductive for me. I already know I mm -hmm. struggle to eat enough. Uh, that is something. That, and I know there's people right now too that are listening. They're just like, oh, I wish I had that same problem. I, you know what? You'd be surprised. Like people who think they, 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 they overeat, they overeat carbs. Yeah. Carbs and saturated fat, yeah. the, the, the stuff that tastes amazing. It's hard to overeat lean good protein yeah. it really is i mean that was like one of the easiest hacks ever for clients was to say hey i'm not going to put you on some crazy diet i'm not going to tell you, you can't have anything but you just have to go get your protein and go get it from chicken steak fish all these sources just go hit your number every single day then after that go ahead and have some things yeah and like people almost people, always they couldn't eat anything after and, that. and a lot of people wonder why why is protein so satiating like why did we develop this um satiety effect from protein in nature so obviously we evolved for most of human history, uh, you know, like hunter gatherers, right? So in nature, pro foods that were high in protein were typically animal. Like it really wasn't a high protein, non-animal source. You're not going to go find plant protein powder <laughs> growing on a tree or whatever. So it was animal and animal sources of protein are extremely nutrient dense, right? High in nutrients to the point where organ meats, you can actually overdose on certain nutrients if you eat them all the time. So it makes sense that we evolved to continue to have an appetite when we're eating, especially carbs and maybe some fats, although fats oftentimes were found with proteins. And then we hit those protein targets, our bodies slowed down the appetite because we probably got all the nutrients Which we needed. needed yeah. Right. So it makes perfect sense. So you're right. You know, most people, you bump their protein. But I mean, you know, I know some people, they like the appetite suppressing effects. For me, I don't know, man. It's, it's, uh, it's weird. Like yesterday I was eating chicken and I found myself like, like, Oh my god! I don't want to eat any more chicken. I'm like, uh oh, we got to see if this if this is gonna work out for me. This might not be a peptide. Yeah, I just I don't yeah. know. That's the me. reason why I'm not a big fan of the, those type of peptides. Yeah. I just don't think that's ever been a great strategy for my clients that need to lose significant body fat. I think people that need to lose a big amount of body fat, thirty plus pounds. First of all, even though I know the calories, the calories are a result of something else, right? It's normally like a the root cause is related to something actually emotional. There's normally some sort of uh, damage that they've done in the past, trauma that they're dealing with, they're, they're self-medicating through food. And so any sort of weight loss pill, appetite suppressant, metabolism speeder up thing, like all of those things are all temporary because the person still has the trauma. They still yeah. have all those things. And so either one, they utilize that tool and they lose a bunch of weight and they're temporarily happy until it ends up coming back on, or they switch medicating with uh, food uh, to another drug or some other fix uh, fix well, if they don't do that. I'd, I'd rather teach somebody how to deal with uh, feelings of cravings and appetite and how they use food to maybe distract themselves versus uh, take away all those feelings and now you just eat less because you want to eat less. You never learn those skills. You have to learn those skills at some point, right? Yeah. And if you can learn those skills and you can navigate the world uh, of high, heavily processed foods and foods that are, you know, 
super readily available. So, and those are important skills uh, yeah. in order to maintain good health. Yeah. Anyway, um, I want to tell you guys something funny. You know, having kids, you end up doing things you never thought you would end up doing because obviously you love your kids so much. <laughs> so, like last night, I'm putting um, Aurelius to bed, and he's going through a little phase where he he he'll get a little bit like he won't want to go to bed or he's a little scared or something like that. So I put him down um, and put him in his in his bed. And first he's like, can I have some water? So I get him some water. Can I have a tissue? I give him some tissue. So I'm like, okay, he's stalling. And I can tell he's a little bit like worried, you know, getting a little nervous. So I started singing to my son. I you started, started singing I started singing him a song, bro. And I was making <laughs> yeah. up lyrics. And I'm like, oh my well, Just God. like a song you just, I just spontaneously bro, came up with. I just made, I'm not going to, and I will not, I'm not going to sing on the podcast. <laughs> we'll lose every listener. Oh man. But the lyrics are like, you know, like in tomorrow you're going to have a fun time and you're going to play in your sandbox. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Your mom loves you and your dad loves you and you love fast cars and your favorite color is blue. And I'm singing this Dude, song. Yeah, that's and he's, so funny. he's like laying down. He's making this like little smiley face as he's laying down. And you know, it, was, it was really cute. Right. So I did that. So this morning, I Love guess it. he woke up and he goes to Jessica and he goes, Papa sings to me every night. And I'm like, oh, great. I want me to see you. <laughs> That's going to be like an every night thing. Dude, know. you know you gave the advice the other day about, uh, you know, we were talking about me leaving and then, um, you know, telling my son a story about. Oh, before you actually do it? Before yeah. I actually do it. So I did it last night, right? But here's what's so funny was I was like, so he's laying, I'm, I'm putting him down and, and uh, after we read, we do the story. And um, I tell, I forget what I said. I said something like, daddy's going to tell you a story. He's like, story dad. So he said, yes, yeah, story. I'm going to tell you a story about a dad and a boy and his dad going off to work or something like that. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember. I said something like that. And he pops his head up. He goes, I don't want to hear that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's good. You know what that means? So he's literally feeling those feelings. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. going through the story helps right. him process. Well, the so what that. I did, I tricked him, right? I said, okay, well, what do you want to, what do you want to hear? Right? He's like Spider-Man, right? So, so I told him like a, a Spider-Man dad and son story. Oh, that's and I, I, with I the weave, same yeah, premise. I weave, yeah. I weave the, the dad leaving off to go fight, fight crime or something. And he had to go for like three days to so come, yeah, come back. So I'm like, I'm just, <laughs> you're not getting away from not getting my moral. I have a, yeah. I have a moral that I'm trying to teach you here. So the hobgoblin, you know, I, yeah, so I, I, I ended up uh, still teaching him that through the story, but it was so funny because it was like top of mind. You had just said something. I'm like, Oh, I, I'm telling, I'm actually putting him down that night. Yeah. This is normally it's Katrina. And I'm like, Oh, this is a good opportunity to, to utilize the tool that Sal said. So, and I'm, I'm going away in the next coming weekend. So I went to do it. He just, he popped his head up real quick. He's, no, I don't want to hear that That's story. Hilarious. Yeah. Dude. So I thought that was so funny. That's funny. If you bring that, like, I, I appreciate anybody else that like starts just singing things randomly. Cause I feel like I'm like, <laughs> That's that's like my love language. Like yeah. I, it's one of those things where it's like I'll jock rock my way through life. You know, like I just like <laughs> yeah, I'll just yeah. walk around and see. And I start picking up like my kids are like even Courtney will just be like I'm doing the dishes. So the you whole know, house, the whole house. I got them doing it. You know, it's that's just like funny. can't help it, dude. Bro, what did you think of that video I sent you yesterday about that? That what that composer was saying? Yeah, it was dude. Like you said, profound's the, the best word I think to describe it. I think it was just one of those things where you don't have a lot of words to articulate music because it's kind of when you really stop to think about music and, and what it does uh, and it being like a vibration and like how that's the whole thing starts with that and how it affects us on like such a deep level uh, and how he related it to being the way that you communicate love was just like. Pfft. Well, so he's a comp I love listening to people who are super passionate about a subject who can communicate it in a way to where you could feel the passion and understand um, why they're so passionate about what they're talking about. And he did that. So I'm listening to him I'm like, wow. And I'm, he's like blowing my mind. And when he said that, I remembered um, how when fMRI machines first started getting used and to watch how the brain gets lit up during d different experiences, music lights up the entire brain. Like there isn't like one music part of the brain. The whole brain turns on yeah. when you listen to music. One other thing does that, the feeling of love. It lights up the entire brain. It's this, It's so mm -hmm. profound in how it affects us. It's why it affects our memory. Like you can remember, if you want to remember something, you put it in a song. Yeah. It's how we communicate. It can elicit feelings. Uh, almost any feeling can be elicited through uh, through music. And it's really weird. Like you, you earlier we were talking, you said it's um, chaos. It's, or, it's taking chaos and then making it organized yeah yeah it's, it directs it it organizes it all together so it makes sense it's it, because you're right because if you take a bunch of random notes it sounds like noise yeah. organize them the right way it becomes music 
Yeah. So cool. Yeah, I love yeah. stuff like that. That is know? fascinating. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. Yeah. I mean, that gets me tripping out too, of like my preferences and where I'm at with like my mood. And I could always tell kind of where I'm at, like if I'm too stressed or if I'm like, if I'm feeling good or if I, uh, you know, I'm optimistic or I'm negative or like, you know, what I'm doing and going to my well of music and like different artists that kind of inspire me in different ways. It's but, always heavy. What are you talking about? Well, it is <laughs> around you guys. You know, this is my happy music. Yeah. There's a lot of chaos. <laughs> sad. This is my meditative yeah. song. All the same. Yeah. Yeah. That's all angry. Yeah. Like like. Dissonant like chords and like, yeah. and then it just, I'm, I'm able to kind of funnel that into like a, a you know, uh, like a, a, a direction where I'm like actually moving forward. I think I'm probably the most diverse out of all of us when it comes to music is what I listen to. I go all over the place. Yeah. you. I feel like just is the most narrow. I think. You That's you have a little true. bit you have a little bit of mix yeah. of like your I house and your I appreciate all like lots of music but I only listen to on a regular basis like a couple genres I think is yeah, that yeah. what you mean yeah yeah what Doug like if like if you were to go through like, a good exercise to do this is ask somebody like you, you know uh, what what's playing in each car you have what's on your yeah. stereo what's in your on your you know playlist right that you listen to last and you can tell real quickly like how how diverse it is if it's all like the same type of stuff then you listen to what do you listen to Doug I listen to everything mm. really um I do like I listen sometimes to jazz sometimes to rock sometimes to classical mm. I really everything. I like a, I a mix. Classical. I honestly, I'm not the type of person that I go. Oh, I have a favorite song. I'm gonna play it over and over again. Mm, yeah, I like something new all the you time. You know, you're right, Justin. I went in your car once. You were playing classical. I play classical all the time. Yeah, yeah. It, again, like I show you guys probably the the heavier stuff all the time because, like I said, like it's. Uh, I think it's it's for me more of a drive. Like it's like I'm, I want to be productive. Like I, I want to get up. I want to get after it. Like I, it's just it, it hits my central nervous system differently than everything else. Uh, but classical music gets my brain firing in all cylinders. Like it's it's just a very cognitive thing for me. Yeah, like I can, I can think more clearly. That jazz is interesting because when you go deep into jazz, it makes zero sense to me. You ever hear jazz when they just start going off? I think that's the point, there's right? There's different kinds of jazz, though. It just I mean, there's like, like doing the freeform, yeah. you know, improv style jazz. And then there's others that have kind of a melody. I, I don't I, really appreciate the ones where they just kind of go like, off with these rave. crazy, yeah. you know, yeah. sax I listen solos. to, on Spotify, a playlist called Dinner Jazz every night. So every night I listen. While you're to cooking? It. Yeah. No, I'm, well, I'm not only cooking. Katrina only cooks. I clean. When I clean... At night, that's part of our routine. She takes Max up to bath. I turn on the the dinner jazz and I clean the whole bottom half of the Does, house. Has your son? Has he shown a preference? You know, um, he likes. Uh, so he really likes right now that the um, what is the trolls the world tour? So that's rock. That's good music. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah no, it's oh, all yeah, it's got classic rock. So yeah. it's all classic rock that they're that are in there. So he he'll listen to classic is that the rock. One with Justin Timberlake. Is that, that no, so that's maybe. the other oh. one, oh, yeah. and he does listen to that. So the two it's trolls, like the second one, the second right. It's yeah, the, the, oh, it's okay. the one where the, the 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 metal troll comes over and takes over all the other trolls' song strings. Have you seen that? <laughs> I haven't seen oh, that. if you haven't oh, seen God, that, you would it, love bro. that. You would it's love literally it. okay. So each. The the I, the concept of the the show or the movie or whatever is, uh, there's you know the jazz trolls, the the rock trolls, the EDM trolls, yeah, the EDM, yeah. The, and they, and they all they all got a string That's from the guitar okay. that represents their type of music, and they all live in their own little you know country or whatever, and mm -hmm. they don't go outside of that. And the one girl who has the rock, the heavy metal. She decides she's gonna take over all the, and she comes in Naturally. and like, yeah, yeah, steals all their stuff, <laughs> and so it's a, it's a, the whole thing is based off good of music. music. It is, it's got great music. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I'll yeah, yeah. It no, up. it's a, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good watch. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I, it's one of the ones I didn't mind my son like kind of watching over and over. I'm like, uh, okay, yeah. so I, I get behind the music, the soundtrack from it. So, dude, yeah, I, I love when they consider the parents when they make some of these movies. Yeah, it's like, dude, oh, smart. Dude, I, I'm, I'm like, I try to introduce new movies because he'll get stuck. My son will get stuck on the same one over and over and I have to like convince him to try a new one and uh, so it, like for a while it was Toy Story it was Cars mm -hmm. uh, then it was uh, what's, what's the other one that uh, uh, Monsters Inc but I finally oh, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get him to watch um, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs because I love yeah, that one that's a great so I'm like one. I could watch that one over and I don't over think again. I've seen that one. Oh, you haven't you know no. what's a really funny one is uh, Storks Hilarious. Storks is Did you good. see that? Yeah. Dude, Hilarious. so funny. Like, I was like, I didn't have any expectation about that movie. And then because it being like uh, this kind of 
cheesy cartoon, but it was like really fun. No, so yeah. Max has this book. It's a Sesame Street book, and each page is, uh, you know, alphabet, numbers, shapes, and one of the last pages is opposites. Up, down, big, small, long, short, dry, wet, in, out, and... I made the mistake of, you know, doing the voices and characters one time. And there's <laughs> one of the things is uh, it's Ernie and Bert and uh, Ernie is inside the house. Bert is outside the house. And then when you it has a little flap on it and when uh, you, you flap the door, Ernie is now out and then he's in. Mm. And when you do that in a re like real small, like picture they change uh bert's face because he slams the door on his face oh. and so bert has got like this angry <laughs> face and so yeah. i turn it into like a like he's intentionally slamming the door on him and make a big deal about it and, and it makes him laugh like crazy and so and this has been going for months now he's where gotta keep doing it i have to keep doing it over and that's all he wants me to do like Just he slam the he'll, he'll tell katrina <laughs> like daddy i want daddy to read me i want daddy to read me and then he'll get me and then he'll, and he'll go opposites and he just wants me to do that and I'll do it. And then he tries to do it the same way. And then he, again, again, it's just back and forth until finally like Katrina will hear me have done it for like 10 minutes straight. She'll be like, okay, it's mommy's turn to read now. Cause he will, I, he won't stop. He'll and make I, me do it. Twice. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of time you spend as a dad repeating the same shit over and over. Cause the kid <laughs> likes it. I mean, people don't realize that that's oh, a big yeah. part of being oh, yeah. a father. Yeah. Speaking of parents yep. and stuff, did you guys see that controversial post that went up I, f I think it's a professional pitcher's uh wife that he posted uh about i'm gonna i'm gonna look it up right now just to make sure i, I, I get it right but um she apparently was on a flight with her two young children okay here we go this is uh a toronto blue jays pitcher and he posted about his wife and the post said um that it says uh, the flight attendant just made my 22 week pregnant wife traveling with a five-year-old and a two-year-old to get on her hands and knees and pick up the popcorn mess that was made by my youngest daughter. So he posts that, right? And the controversy is all these people who are like, clean up after your kids. Of course, you're supposed to pick it up. Your kid threw it on the floor or whatever. I'm like, none of you guys have kids and none of you have had a wife that's 22 weeks pregnant. Like she's traveling with a five and a two-year-old, 22 weeks pregnant. You're going to have her get on the floor and pick shit up. And so I'm watching all these posts, all these comments of people who are like, yeah, she needs to clean it up. Her daughter made that mess. I'm like, you guys have no idea what that's oh, like. Wow. I know. I can't believe people are actually uh, not siding with them. But I guess they just yeah. don't understand. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, the, it, there's a disconnect there for sure, you know, from people, I think, too. And, and I guess the, the hard part for me is, you know, some of these people have like a, a – I guess like this, this repulsion to kids or being around kids. Or, and I'm yeah. like, motherfucker, you were a kid. Yeah. <laughs> you're probably a shitty kid yeah. on top of that, <laughs> you know, and you're sitting here complaining about all this, like have a little compassion and relax. Uh, yeah. I wonder how, I, I don't think I would definitely side with the people that would be all up in arms about that. No. Like I, I would have compassion, especially seeing. Dude, a, I would have picked it up for her. Could you imagine seeing a 22 week pregnant yeah, woman who's by herself, the five and a two year old yeah. Yeah. on the floor no. trying to pick. I think I would, I would just help be like, her. whatever. Yeah. I mean, I've seen plenty of people spill and make messes and not pick it up. And so of all the people I wouldn't freak out about doing that, it would be somebody in that situation. Yeah. So I think that's really, you know, it's our culture now, man. It's, it's just, so it's, weird. This, this anti kid, me, me, anti family, yeah. it, you know, type of deal. That's just, like you got people that are just and i can I, there's a part of me that i was 25 at one point and, and even at a, a point in my life where i didn't know if i was going to have kids that uh totally like would just oh god i'm on one of those planes with a screaming baby and stuff sure like i that. get that right not enough to be so angry where i'm like shut your kid up like oh i would never god. do something like that no. but enough to where i'm like god damn it I just of course like, oh, yeah of course yeah, i'm on the wrong just, plane or of course i got this plane up louder and yeah. like frustrated but I mean, and now I don't, it doesn't bother me at all because I get it. You know what I'm saying? I, and I know that when you're as a parent, there's not much you can do in that situation. And the more you react as a parent, the more it makes work, it makes it worse. So it's like, I wouldn't be helping the cause. I just feel like people aren't raised with uh, like general uh, manners. I think that's general manners. Like when I was a kid, right. like if I was sitting close, if we were at a restaurant, okay. And I was sitting next, like within like like three steps of the door to a restaurant. And let's say an old lady was trying to walk in with a cane, and having trouble. If I didn't get up to help, like my dad would get up yeah, and help, and then he slap you in the back, and he tell me afterwards, like yeah. you see that you go, or if you're sitting on a bus, 
old person get, get comes up. up. Get up, let them sit down. You see a pregnant woman. Yeah. Tra first of all, she doesn't have to be pregnant. You see anybody, any parent traveling with a five and a two year old. Do you have any idea what hell that is to do? <laughs> yeah. Does any, nobody has an idea. Like, yeah. People don't know this. Traveling with one child Help by them yourself. with their bags, you know? Oh my God. Do something Two helpful. by yourself and on a plane, the uh, whole deal. Like that's crazy alone. I feel the same Let alone way. being pregnant. Yeah. I feel the same way about the, the young guy who doesn't. Uh, offered to put the the you know seven year old lady's bag above. In yeah, the, I mean, bro, I saw yeah. that. It just happened at the flight we were just on right now. And Did I, that, you I, see I, that? I had a lady. So in, I had a lady in front of me who's yeah. you could tell she was at least you know sixty five plus, probably seventy plus, and I saw that she had a a good size carry on. And before she even got to her seat, I tapped her on the shoulder. I said, "Hey, let me get that for you when you get there." And she was like, "Oh yeah, told, thank you so much." You yeah. know, I'm like, yeah. I just I've seen young guys like standing right there and seeing the lady like struggling. Just leave her. Dude, I saw the same thing. I was in this gymnastic tournament. And this this old lady was like trying to make her way back to the bleacher seats, and it's just like she's losing her balance, and like she's going past this whole row of young guys, and they're all just like, Whoa, you know, like moving out of the way. And I get up and I grab her arm, and I'm like, help. She's like, oh, thanks. Like it, it's just like, dude, do something helpful. You're right there. No, what's sad is we live in a society now where they're more likely to grab their phones out to catch a film video it. filming, oh, and so, so it'll true. potentially go viral than they are to probably step up, grab yeah. her hand and help her it's walk like when you this. watch those videos of like someone like getting like violently assaulted and there's like 10 people filming it mm -hmm. like, uh go do something dude yeah. yeah i'm filming it for the police no you're not bro you're yeah. filming it because you're gonna post you're it. you're hiding behind your phones yeah right? get over there and, and help people out i don't yeah. know it's kind of crazy yeah, yeah. Di different world yeah it made me mad just to just to see that anyway <laughs> yeah. uh so I, go ahead adam no i just i i was gonna ask you guys because before i was i think it was in the restroom i heard i overheard you guys talking stuff about elon and ai stuff oh, and yeah. is there something going viral right now that he said or did like yeah i guess he was talking to he got interviewed and he was talking about why he created, why he was one of the founders of Open, uh, was it Open Source? Open Source. Uh, open so, so originally, open one of his friends was uh, one of the founders of Google. Larry Page? Right. Larry Page. Okay, and so they used to hang out like in Palo Alto and discuss these things. And they would talk about um, the potential of AI, and Elon talked about the potential dangers. And the reason why he you know, helped found Open AI was so that they could, they could you know, keep it open and produce something that's safe, because it's inevitable, this this intelligence, this artificial intelligence is going to get built. So he's trying to head it off at the pass and create like a safe version. And he's saying that Larry Page was like, I just want to create like an AI god. Like I want to have like a digital god that just does. And he's like, bro, like that's like, do you not understand the the potential dangers of that? Yeah. I, I you know re what's crazy about this is every week something else comes out. Like I just read that Paramount, like one of the the executives at Paramount did a presentation. Um, and generated images of some of their top like characters of money making movies, and then animated it with an instant, and everybody started freaking out. They're like, "Oh shit, our jobs are yeah. done. Yeah. Like, we got to figure out how we can either make like, money off this or protect." It's not just coming; it's here. Yeah. yeah, that's that's sort of the <laughs> the sentiment. I think everybody just needs to finally kind of reconcile with the fact that it's here, and now we need to start paying a lot more attention to it. So what does that look like, Casey? I, I've thought about this a lot. Uh, you know, I, I'm constantly, obviously, talking about this right now. And I think about how entertainment's going to look in the future. And what I predict it's going to be like, which is going to be really interesting, is that we'll pay for a AI service, like, but it won't be Netflix, it'll be, unless those guys get smart and build it themselves, which I don't think they're even building in that direction. But like a, a an AI service that can create a movie from scratch, just like whatever that, you want, whatever you want. And I think that you will program it. Like, I want to watch a yep. two hour movie that is a blend of a few good men and remember the Titans mixed with like, and you could reference a bunch of things like that, and then instantaneously it script and create a piece of entertainment for you that you can like. So my brain goes immediately like there's going to be a lot of shitty ideas, right? <laughs> so I, you, you want a platform where people rate and review, right? Yeah. So that way it's like somebody comes up with an amazing idea like that, like, and then it gets all these five stars and then elevates itself to the top. And then they start generating money in that direction. So it's like everybody, it's almost like a YouTube on steroids, right? Like, so you have a way to, be that creative, but are, are your ideas good? You know, and then we'll see. That's actually a really brilliant theory because obviously there's going to be a way 
to monetize this stuff. There's, There's going to be, be a, someone will find a way to to create it because the the initial thought that we have and we we say is like oh everything's going to be free everyone's going to have able to do all this like that no there's going to be there's going to be people that are smart that harness this power and drive it in a direction that the consumer wants it and then await and find a way to monetize it that's a really good theory that you're right like i could plug that in and then the ai just spits off this i mean i just put, i said a football movie a lawyer movie <laughs> yeah, and so yeah. there's this weird blend of like a, a football player that becomes a lawyer and it's like stupid and you're like that's not very good well, but if you had it built into a piece of software that then rated it based off of everybody else it would, would well what it, would happen is the ai would learn how to make your ideas entertaining that's that's what's going to happen it's not just an order taker mm -hmm. remember these are machines that learn and they learn from each other so you could create something, and then you and rate it low. Some people are dull, it's better. Is what my point? Say what? Some people are dull. Yeah. Well, they are, but the AI isn't. So the AI is like, well, I think I know what you want, but here's what you're gonna get, yeah. and you're gonna love it. Well, right. And your and your input is what's going to steer it to yeah. be more accurate to you. And that idea, like maybe my collection of AI movies is shitty in your eyes, but it's gonna be. But it's his. It's, he loves that. But shit. you I, love it. I, yeah, that's a good point too. So that's yeah. so that's what it's gonna look like. Is like, and and that's how you're. That's how you're gonna steer it. Is you're going to. Oh yeah, that was no good. Oh, that was excellent. Okay, which is how the algorithm on Netflix already works right yeah, now. True. You rate it, and then you, it curates the movies for you. And which is why I always get irritated when other people use my Netflix because <laughs> it's just like <laughs> it starts to change my curation on like these weird ass films Bro, that I'm not into. It's getting weirder and weirder. Like after <laughs> I started renting out our place in Palm Desert. Oh, like, <laughs> you're now because they're using your Netflix. Yeah. yeah, you're like I didn't even know this existed. No, I have no idea. It's like there's a whole world of uh, potential. That's how I feel when I get online and someone's been using it. I'm like, oh my god, I didn't even know these were like. Yeah, does the CW still exist? Like, what is this? <laughs> oh man, yeah. did, did you see that video that, that Rogan posted of that UFO? That, oh, did yeah. you see that? No, it, like a pilot, like a was it a Navy pilot posted? Yeah, Navy it? pilot. It, it literally looks, uh, and I and saw a comment like it almost looked like a Mandalorian just <laughs> zipping by real quick. Oh god. Uh, I mean, there was no jet. There was no like propulsion system. It, it just, just was like this floated by hell fast. floating. Yeah, metallic looking object, like diamond looking thing. I feel like uh, these are happening more and more often because I think your idea. I think you're the one that told me your idea. That oh, that's it right there. Oh, I haven't seen this. Wa 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 watch this. It's going to watch. It's just going to. Just uh, into frame and then out. Boom. What the fuck? Right? Yeah, <laughs> I told you. Exactly. And that's not a satellite. Yeah, okay. What the fuck? I mean, yeah. it could be like an experimental drone or something, which I saw in the comments. Maybe it's a, like a Navy drone yeah, or something. Look at that. But, but so, yeah, look at right there. It's like look. a diamond looking thing. Dude. So, you know, okay. So Justin's theory, he said this a while ago. <clears throat> I got to share this again because I think this is brilliant, right? Like there's this like. <laughs> This alien, you know, intergalactic federation and Earth is like this protected habitat. <laughs> Sounds so nerdy. It does, but listen, it makes sense because all these UFOs have been popping it. up lately. Yeah. So they're just watching us. We're like, you know, here's our rules that we've made. This is a protected habitat. Do not interfere with them whatsoever. So we're like a giant ant farm? Yeah, like we're not going to interfere with them unless- mm -hmm. They start they, eating each other. They start to threaten the, the, like the universe. Right. So they're watching us create AI. Now they're watching very closely. Like, eh, we're going to step in. When yeah, you saw them get. pop up a lot when we had nuclear power and uh, when I, we were going cool through theory. that. So now we have AI is a big, enormous threat. So, yeah. Does like, that align with your AI as Satan threat idea too, though? Can you intertwine those stories? The Antichrist, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah. it right. Yeah, yeah, get get it sorry. Right. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. We usher, but we have to usher it in, right? And so that's why my whole thought of like we're creating and building and I mean, uh, this, there's this weird sense that we're programmed to build and innovate and press us somewhere, right? But why are ourselves. we all pressing towards AI and like and in building out this uh, this program and this thing to become basically our overlord? Like that's just so weird. To I me. think it's our narcissism. We're yeah. like we're going to create something we can control. That's yeah, better than us. That'll be this ultimate tool. Yeah, that makes a lot. But of it's sense, like that's it, like the most we're naive never, thing to ever say. Right there, yeah. we're going to create something that is better than us that we're going to control. Yeah. Yeah, think about that for it, a second. <laughs> again, yeah, just completely like, yeah, narcissistic. <laughs> but yeah, like, it, I mean, the whole thing is that you, there has to be like one leader that everybody subscribes to and trusts, and there's no way a human being is going to fit that role. Well, so the challenge. So I, I watched a talk on this in the, the 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 in the past throughout all history, totalitarian regimes have always aimed to control people. Always control your thought your movement, your perch, you know, what you, what you use, what you don't use, all that stuff. 
but they the the best they could get was spies and and you know threats and fear. They couldn't really control everybody and watch everything, right? And that's also true for markets. The reason why free markets are so effective is the pricing system makes them so efficient. And so trying to control it from a central place, it's just so inefficient that you end up, you, you just collapse the economy. You, you become inefficient. Well, AI now allows you to read all those signals and control those people. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like a, it's like a dictator's wet dream. Yeah. Like he has this tool. He could totally. It can adjust on the fly. It's a, it'll adjust kind itself. of feedback. That's right. Yeah. And he could direct it to do it's whatever. Crazy. I know. It uh, sucks. Meanwhile, we're going to be rocked to sleep with all of our movies that we're all sitting at home watching. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Everything's fine. We're so, yeah, exactly. Everything's, <laughs> Everything's okay. Everything's okay. Yeah. Everything's okay. Yeah. You got your, oh, you got your great movies. Oh, he's got my whoopee. He's getting sad. Here's some more serotonin, yeah. sir. <laughs> I, Ooh, well, I think about how crazy that is. Okay. We already know how and you've all, everyone in here has experienced, uh, a, a binge session of watching a television yeah. show or a series. Like imagine when you can make it that good all the time that it's all binge worthy. The, every episode the, makes you cry. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> every episode takes you on that Bro. emotional cliffhanger and, and then leaves you in the cliffhanger that makes you have to turn it on again. Like I am sad uh, already that this is the finale of Mandalorian. I mean, we haven't even talked about this entire series. <laughs> That's because I whole haven't watched time. it. He hasn't watched, watched it. Because, not, because, he hasn't watched it. Well, whatever. Terrible like, Star Wars fan. Yeah. Catch up, man, because it's... <laughs> I got hella kids, bro. Electric, I can't watch dude. TV. Like, <laughs> I got nine kids. <laughs> yeah, we get it. But it's it's that good. It, and our, oh, it is good. Yeah, is there's really spoilers good. in there, but uh, I loved seeing our boy Tate in there, too. He had a great oh, role. Yeah, he oh, was... Cool. Yeah, he was one of the main uh, Mandalorians in there. So it was, it's it's just leading up to finally like a cool place where I wanted to see Star Wars go. And that's I think that's why I'm excited about it again. I was so flat about... Star Wars there for a while and was just like, Ugh. like I just don't I don't like anything they're coming out with and this is finally like getting my feels back. Have you have you read the statistics on how many new uh like hardcore Star Wars people have come on since the like this all the new stuff on Disney and everything like that and and are they losing more people off? Like, is the community growing or is it shrinking or is it maintaining because there's a fall off of old radicals, you know, original well, purist. Can, can I guess, Justin, before we say something? Because yep. um, John Favreau, is that his name? Favreau, Favreau and, and Filoni is the other writer. They 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 write, the Mandalorian is written uh, by like real Star Wars fans. Authentic, so, yeah. Yeah, Star so I'd Wars imagine fans. it caters to the real Star Wars fan, not trying to get yes. new ones, yes. but it's like the fans that are there. Which, already. in fact, is, has been their most successful show. Yeah. And has brought on the most new uh, subscribers. So okay. that's that's the recipe. They, they fucked with the formula because of all the other things they want to smash in there, uh, which has just been entertainment in general. Like you've seen this across the board of just, uh, it's not just about a good story. It has to have like all these other like social issues and all these other things kind of just smashed mm -hmm. in there. And I just think that if you just keep the story a story and it's compelling enough and it holds its own weight, uh, it's going to do very well. It's going to perform at a high level. Yep, I still feel like they sprinkle a little bit of like the social stuff. I thought that the episode where they were, they remember I brought it up on the episode where, and you haven't, so you haven't seen this yet, but the episode where I forget what uh, planet it was and that all robots basically run everything. And so it was this like conundrum oh, yeah. that they were in of like, yeah. like and we're, I mean, but we're- that's cool though. Like, okay, so- That's a cool real social issue okay, that so we that, could, Okay, so that's a good point. Um, is Star Wars has always incorporated that and that's why they deal with really deep social, like the, the structure of society, like, yeah. you know, like uh, tyranny, uh, oppression, like, so a lot of that is wrapped in religion and like yeah. how people reconcile with it. Like, so there's a lot of really like deep thematic things that they throw in there. Um, so that makes sense, right? Like, yeah. I think it's the, um, it's the surf, I guess it's like, um, uh, I guess the the trends of what the culture is doing right now. I get so more like the the the, the lightweight kind of woke bullshit that we get right now. That's yeah. just like okay, they didn't need to make its way in there because no. it's not like a yeah. deep thought out. Yes, that, to me, I, I what I loved about that episode is like that's a very real 
possibility yeah. in the very it, to the conversation that we were just yeah, previously I having. That. I love that. Very episode. near future, that, yeah. like you know, it's very real, and and they paint it as like this utopia, uh -huh. right? It's like this oh, this amazing place where everybody's so happy, and it's like all these robots take care of everything. But then what happens if like they've built the entire system so much on it? It's like oh shit, what happens if they start malfunctioning? And we have this button that's supposed to shut them all down. Yeah. But then if we shut them all down, that means everything stops. I mean, that's how people eat. That's how they get their entertainment. That's how they get all. It's like yeah. oh shit, so we're in this weird conundrum of the, these things are starting to over like overthrow and what us. If or the, the robots have personality, you know, and they have their own meetups. Like they want to get away from the humans. Yes, and, and they had this bar together. <laughs> yes, it was so great. And I love that, dude. That's such a great angle. Oh, I can't wait to get to yeah. that. Yeah, episode. yeah, no. Right. See, there's there's good stuff. Well, so we're we're supposed to mention Organifi. You know what I picked back up from Organifi? Mm. Pure. I haven't used that in a while. Oh, I saw you do that yesterday. Love it. Love it. I don't know why I stopped. I love it. It's such a mild, calm, a definitely mood boosting uh, product, but so mild and calm. That it's something you can use on a regular basis, not worry about it affecting your sleep negatively or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I like that I could throw it on top of the fact that I'm already having a lot of caffeine right now. So it's yeah, like, actually it balances it's, out it caffeine. It does. It does help really well. Trade that oh, smooth. really? Yeah, yeah, it does, bro. Take it with caffeine and you won't get more amped. You'll just be smoother. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. maybe I'll take it. Another... that. And then I'm, anytime somebody mentions it, I'm like, oh my God, I'm back on it. Yeah, well, yeah we got to no, just start it back we up. We got to do another episode today. So maybe I'll do it right now to get me over the hump. So let's uh, let's give a shout out to Thomas DeLauer. We just uh, great meeting him. Great meeting. That episode will drop at some point in the near future. Uh, great guy. He's a legit. Very like-minded. Authentic person. Really enjoyed uh, talking to him. Good so, dad. Yeah, great dad. If you, don't, yeah. if you don't follow him, go check him out. Check this out. Uh, there's a company called ButcherBox that delivers grass-fed meats and wild-caught fish to your door. If you're interested in healthy, high-protein meats that are also inexpensive, this is a great company. And if you go through our link, you get a fat hookup. So if you go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump and use the code mind pump, not only will you get 15% off, but you also get chicken thighs for a year and you'll also get $20 off your first box. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Matt from Ontario. Matt, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, man. All right. Good. Yeah, um, I just kind of recently started uh, weightlifting, I would say. And I'm kind of transitioning out of... Um, uh, boxing based workouts, I would say it's kind of just my passion, what I enjoy doing. Um, big combat sports enthusiast. And I don't know, every time I go to the gym, it's all right, but I find myself just kind of struggling to do the transition. So, um, I guess my main question is like, if I continued to train more as like a combat sports athlete, is this, would I end up seeing long-term issues? Is, is this like a good way? Like, is this a good way for like training for longevity and strength? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Uh, so here's a, so Matt, um, the, the thing with tra all training is that you have to modify it as your lifestyle changes, as you get older, as you know, just things start to change. Maybe injuries start to compile. For example, you like combat sports, right? Um, you could you could spar uh, for a while, but that's probably going to be the first thing that you'll stop doing as you get older, right? Getting punched, that's pretty damaging. But you could hit the bag, you could hit the mitts, you could do all the training. Plus, if you've been boxing for a long time, you can maintain the skill pretty well uh, by simply practicing the technique and maintaining that level of fitness. Grappling, um, you know, wrestling, judo, those are probably the the sports that you'll have to cut the hard sparring a little sooner, like getting thrown and doing takedowns more dangerous than like jujitsu jujitsu. You could do for a long time, but you just have to scale the intensity uh, a little bit. My question for you is Matt, what made you want to transition? Why did you move more towards, I guess, gym work and away from the combat type training? Um, I'm a smaller framed guy. So I was just kind of looking to put on a little bit of size. That was one of the main things, but then I just, it's not as enjoyable as what I was doing before. So <laughs> yeah, now I'm kind of yeah. stuck in that mindset of, do I really, you know, care to get bigger? Is it really that big of a deal? Yeah. That matters. I mean, I, it sounds like someone like you would do great with just like one day full body lifting. That's and then, a, and yeah, then just compliment it. Yeah. That way it's not like a huge focus. You're not, you're not hitting the weights like crazy, but literally one day a week of a full body, good routine following like a maps anabolic type of routine. If you don't have that, we'll send it your way. And then the rest of it, what you love doing. 
Mm -hmm. and I, you'll, you will put on some muscle. If you weren't doing any sort of strength training like that, just, si just simply doing that, feeding your body correctly and well, while doing your sport and stuff that you love to do, you can absolutely put on a little bit. Now, are you going to be a competitive bodybuilder by doing that? No, of course not. But that's not your passion. That's not your goal. And so uh, I think that would be a great compliment to what you're what you're currently doing. Yeah, I really think just maintaining strength and then just considering the, the impact that um, you're getting towards your joints and, you know, just trying to keep them healthy and, and go for that longevity by – you know, implementing really good, solid uh, mobility rituals and routines that you do continuously. So this is one thing that, uh, in conjunction with your uh, martial arts training, I would I would highly suggest that this is just going to be a part of your daily lifestyle in yeah. terms of like you know making sure your wrists, your elbows, your shoulders, your knees, your hips, all that stuff is um, you, you know, operating properly, and you're you're giving it uh, proper stimulus so that way too, like you're recovering and. Um, you know, that repetitive stress is being accounted for. Matt, what combat sports do you, do you train in? Is it just one or do you, do you try and kind of cover all of them? So it's been cut back to just boxing, but I used to also train in uh, Muay Thai. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, it, Muay Thai, boxing, uh, the most harsh most on the body. aggressive, yes. I would say, but you know, you know this, how long did you box uh, for and what do Muay Thai for? Um, about seven, eight years. Yeah. So I'm sure you saw dudes in there, you know, that were 50s, 60s that didn't spar, but they would hit the bag. They would practice technique. They would do the drills. You could do that for a long time. If you like combat sports and you're open to something that's a little easier on the body, um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is, uh, probably one of the best in that sense, because you can spar, with jujitsu for a long time. Now I'm not saying it's like injury free. It's still, you know, combat sport, but you know, you'll see guys in their sixties, seventies rolling. Um, and you know, they just roll, they, they know how to roll properly. They're, they're, they're smooth with their movement. They're not over aggressive with their egos and they could do that for, you know, you could still go, if you like to go against other people, um, that's a great way to do it. Now, if it's just the, the technique and skill of it, then I would say, you know, maintain your, um, just the skills training. The other question I have for you is what is it about you that wants to get, why do you want to add size? Because in my experience, uh, for guys, the reason why we want to add size is it makes us feel more secure, but nothing made me feel more secure than knowing I could kick somebody's ass. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, being bigger makes you kind of feel like that, but it's kind of fake. Yeah. You're stronger. That's great. But you know, as well as I do, uh, that when you're, you know, sparring and you're fighting, like you feel way more confident. So is it a confidence thing or is it just a looks thing? Um, I, I think it's the looks thing. Maybe there's something in the back of my head I'm unaware of, but I, I would say it's definitely not a confidence thing. It, boxing has done its job there. Um, I think it's just like I, I hang around with a lot of other guys and they're, I'm probably the smallest of the group. But probably the I just toughest. Feel, <laughs> I just feel like I'm a smaller guy. I just feel like maybe I need to put on some size. But as soon as I start trying, I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know if I care. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. No, hey, you're, that's a great realization. Look, I, what Adam said then, once a week, full body training, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do your combat training. And then if you want to gain or lose weight, it's diet from there. That's it. E increase calories, decrease calories, get le leaner or bulk up a little bit. But I think what you're going to find, Matt, is you'll probably uh, experiment with gaining size and then you just won't like the way you feel and move because you like combat sports so much. You'll notice that you won't move as well. Uh, for the most part. So um, you'll probably, you're, you're, it sounds like you're coming to that realization now where it's like, eh, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I do have MAPS Anabolic, by the way. Oh, okay. You, yeah, you're yeah. good. I, I, I want to send you- Prime uh, Pro. Yeah, Prime Pro yeah, yeah. for the mobility. That's going to, you'll be able to use okay. that for the rest of your life to help awesome. complement yep. everything that you're doing. Perfect. Yeah, that'll. Yeah, that's awesome. I don't know, Matt. You got it, Matt. Yeah. Thanks for calling in, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks. You know what I, I love- about this question is a lot of times uh, I, I I do on my Q and A and I have on here before where I'll kind of rail on somebody who have has these like specific aesthetic goals and they're like oh and I want to do my martial arts all the time and then I'm like well do, how bad do you want to do your martial yeah. arts because you're if what I'm hearing from you is like you really want to build this muscle or you really want to look a certain way and that's not ideal for for that mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but. Uh, from what I'm hearing from him is like he loves what he's doing yeah. and that's what he's been doing for seven, eight years. Probably listens to us and thinks like, oh, I probably should incorporate some more strength training. But here, this is where it's different, right? Yep. Yeah. Like if I had somebody who played basketball 
five days a week. They love the sport. Keeps them healthy. They're in shape. They they play every every day at pickup games and stuff like that. And then they're like, man, I hear on Mind Pump, I should be strength training. Strength yeah. training is the best. Building for this. muscle, you know. Yeah, and sell that all day. But. Yeah, and then they and then they go to they go to lift weights and they're just like, ah, just I'm, I'm not into it. I'm like, well, you don't have to. No, you don't. You don't have to. But if but if that same person, by the way, the basketball player or the MMA guy goes. Hey, I want I want to get down to five percent body fat, or I want to build you know fifteen pounds of, of muscle. But I love playing basketball. I don't want to give that up. Well, okay. Well, now we're, now we have a different conversation here because you care so much about putting fifteen pounds of muscle on your sport. Maybe getting in the way of us doing right. that. So, yeah. but that's not what I'm hearing from this guy. I'm hearing that. I just love doing it. Eh, maybe I'd like to put on a little bit of muscle, but I don't really care that yeah, much. Anything keeps you physically active and up and moving and driven. I mean, that's that's what we're all kind of seeking. And so, and and too, that might change for him. Like he might, you know, be there a few years and be like, you know what? Like I, I do want to kind of like spend a good stint in just pure strength training or, you know, or whatever the pursuit is. Like, you know, if you're more focused on that pursuit, I think that's really where we all want to be. Yeah. There's, when it comes to muscle, there's definitely some benefit with certain populations to simply add muscle. So there, you could be underweight, you can have low lean body mass and that can have some uh, negative effects. And so you want to build some muscle. But past a certain point, and it's not big. It's not like, oh, I'm already you know massive and I got big. It's like no, it's like it, not that much. You you gain some muscle, then the benefit simply comes from being stronger, and having better fitness. So yes, you can just try to look better. But when it comes to like health and performance, you know, adding size uh, oftentimes isn't going to benefit you. In fact, it may actually be detrimental past a certain point. Oh, especially yeah. in like combat sports. Yeah. yeah especially Where you have to be fast and loose. Yeah. It's, like some sports yeah. you want, you know, being heavier might help like football, but even with football, like past yeah. a certain point, like, okay, you're bigger, but now you're slower and you can't move as fast. And I can attest to that. hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. You did that, right? Yeah. You I got way too it. big. Yeah. yeah. So, um, nice so that's stuff. the thing. That's the thing people need to realize. And the beauty about strength training is you can modify it to complement anything. Right. So uh, whatever sport you're in, you can lift weights to make you better at that sport. Period. End of story. Our next caller is Tammy from Texas. Hi, Tammy. How can we help you? Hey, guys. I'm so excited to be here. Um, <laughs> I, ha I have a confession. Um, I have a cougar crush on all four of you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. my gosh. <laughs> I really do appreciate your content, though. So thank you. Thank you. So, um after nine years at a desk job, I'm going back into the summer camp world. And I used to run a camp for children with disabilities. And so I know how physically demanding the role is. Um, and so I, I need your help. Um, so for a little history, I'm 59 and I've been lifting and working out since I was 16 years old. Um, I've never really lifted heavy weights. Um, I was more focused on running and I've done triathlons, just the sprint distance, not the, the monster ones. And then I have run several full marathons. Um, weights have always been there, but they've always been kind of secondary to those other goals. Um, I still have decent muscle. I think I, uh, my legs have atrophied a little bit, but everything else, I think there's muscle hidden underneath some of the flab. Um, my last marathon was in 2017 at Big Sur. I went y'all's way. Yeah, yeah nice. Um, it was awesome. And uh, I've not run since, although I do walk a lot. In the last year or so, I finished resistance and then cardio. And I just finished phase three of symmetry. Um, I have Prime and I've been incorporating mobility into my sessions for about a year now, but I know I still have some imbalances and hip problems that my um, massage therapist is trying to help me with. So my goals, I need to lose about 25 pounds that I gained after some trauma a few years ago and then just managed to hang on to. I know I need to increase my steps and time on my feet to prepare for camp because I anticipate walking eight to 10 miles a day, just back and forth across the, the location. I want to maintain my muscle. Um, I need to keep up with young people because this is a young person's job. And then for my 60th birthday, I, I want to um, celebrate with another sprint distance triathlon. So later after summer camp, I want to get in shape for that. So my question, um, 
what programs should I follow over the next year, knowing those are my goals? Um, with I don't have a gym anymore. I used to work out at a purple one, and that's how I finished symmetry the, up to phase three. Um, but now I'm home in a very, 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 very small apartment. Um, I have some dumbbells and stuff, but I'm wondering if I should try to finish phase four of symmetry at home or should I do something else in between now and the time that summer camp starts, which is at the end of May. I'm thinking that um, 15 minutes is right for that uh, 12 weeks or so that I will be basically working from seven in the morning until 11 at night at summer camp and getting all those steps in. And then I'm wondering after summer's over and I can get back to a gym, I'm wondering what I should do if maybe performance or something else would help, would be a good precursor to triathlon training. Yeah. What a great question right. and thorough detail yeah. for us. And I think you actually are leaning the right direction already. For yeah. That. You, you, you know what to do. I think you got the right, the right answers there. I love symmetry. You don't have to do the last phase of symmetry. You could just stick to the unilateral yeah. trade. So for people who aren't who are listening right now, don't know the last phase is a bilateral. It's like kind a five of by five, five by five. Uh, you don't need to do that. You could stick to just the first uh, three phases performance, wonderful program. Yeah, Perfect for uh, her yeah, too. For you, the home version MAPS 15, another great program for you. MAPS suspension would be another great program uh, for you. I think you're, and, and by the way, bless you for for doing what you do. Um, my mom works with special needs, so I know how demanding that is. Uh, and that's uh, that's that's really great work. Uh, it's we, a calling. It, I, I was just going to ask you. It. It's, a, it's a, you know, my mom says the same thing. It gives her a lot of meaning. With the, um, uh, the trauma and the weight gain, have you identified uh, what the food was doing for you uh, during that period of time? Because if, if we don't address that, it's going to be, it's going to pop up somewhere else. And I'm sure you already know. Yeah. That. You know, back in, um, after that last marathon, when we ran Big Sur, um, my husband was dying and he, he ran 24 marathons and he decided, you know, his bucket list, when the doctors told him there was nothing else they could do, he said, I want to run Big Sur and you're going to run with me. And I, I said, you know, honey, most people go to Europe or something on their bucket list, you know? <laughs> and so we ran Big Sur and he ran it five months before he died. Wow. Mm. And it, it, I mean, it was wild. And so at that time, you, he and my mother were both sick at the same time. They ended up dying a few months apart. Oh, wow. And um, while my husband was in at-home hospice with me, Hurricane Harvey wiped out our town. Jesus. And so I had him in a hotel and our business, his business, um, I left the, my disabled camp to learn his business, which is commercial insurance specializing in windstorm. So every one of our customers was affected. I'm in a hotel trying to help them while I'm caring for him because the hospice nurses had all been displaced and they weren't able to come see us or help. So I'm caring for him trying to keep the business um, running and help our customers. And I'm in a hotel. So I started then just eating out all the time and um, definitely self-medicating uh, wine and margaritas were our, were our, my go-to um, after that. And, you know, I start kind of getting a little bit better, get the house put back together, get the business office put back together he died. They, you know, start kind of, and then hard. I mean, uh, COVID hits, and you know, this also was the first time I'd ever lived alone in my life. At you know, fifty four, I think I was, and um, so I just I developed horrible habits, eating out all the time. Mexican food and margaritas are my go to. I've gotten to where it's not a purposeful thing to intermittent fast, but that's what I'm doing. It's, it's, I'm, I'm not hungry. I work out um, or walk mostly in the mornings and then I'm not hungry until nine or 10. So then I, I'll, I eat breakfast and then I don't eat again until three or four cause I'm not hungry. And then, so two meals a day, I know I'm not getting, I'm not getting enough calories and I'm not getting enough protein for sure. Um, and so I'm, I've just developed those habits. And then now I'm trying to focus on 
changing those habits and cooking for myself and trying to eat three meals a day, not whining down at night. Um, and uh, oh, the Mexican food and margaritas, though, that's the hardest part to yeah. give up. Tammy, I'm going to say mm. this. Uh, you're going through what you went through. Jesus Christ. And eating out and drinking some margaritas like that's pretty damn good yeah yeah uh i would have been a, a, especially all that shit yeah Jesus. and the fact and the way you're talking i'll tell you something i've worked with people for a long time okay and i can tell whether or not somebody is on the right path or not on the right path how much i need to guide them how much i don't need to guide them you're on the right path the way you're talking right now what i'm hearing from you um you're processing you're totally self-aware yeah you're, you're you're gonna get there i mean you already figure out you, everything you're saying is is exactly the right uh, direction. So you know, eating out less, you know, hitting the protein targets, you know, planning. I think planning would help quite a bit for you. So you have the food set up. Did you see in the notes that she's met with Cabral too? Oh, oh, I didn't see that. Yes, yeah. I did. And at fifty nine, my hormones are in really good shape. Um, they did not recommend any kind of therapy or all they did was put me on some of their supplements. Um, my cortisol was a little bit high at night and they said that's probably because of my nightly wind down habit. Um, so they wanted me to quit doing that. But, but I mean, for the abuse I've put my body through, I, I, I'm really pleased and I'm not on any kind of medication at all. Yeah, so yeah. just, Oh, but you would love my supplement cabinet. <laughs> it's, it like I would love it. I'm sure. <laughs> you would love that. Than I mean, I, I really think, I think this is a testament to your 40 plus years of being in, in, in and out around that health and fitness. Exactly. You know? Exactly what I was going to say. That's really what this is. Uh, to me, that's what this is. And I, you've hit everything on the head of what you need to do. You already know you need to get those calories up. You need to start hitting the protein intake. You need to build strength and muscle. That should be the main focus right now. You add the walking in like you're doing already. And then, of course, uh, cut back or and hopefully eventually eliminate the alcohol, especially at night. Mm -hmm. um, those, That's it, man. You really you, you do that and you stick with that and be consistent with that. You're you're on the right path. Yeah, I tell you what, I almost want to ask you for advice because of how you handled uh, all those challenges. But, I, you know, the best thing I could tell you, Tammy, which you probably already know, is when you look at the list of things that you like, OK, I got to change all these things. Do one at a time. You know, um, I wouldn't go all at once because what might happen, what's likely to happen is you'll you'll work on one. Let's say it's the wine. So you're like, okay, right now I'm drinking every night. Uh, so I'm going to allow myself to uh, maybe drink twice a week. Or let's say you're like, okay, I'm ready to just cut that out. But I'm not going to work on the other stuff yet. Every step you take, feelings are going to pop up. And you're going to have to process more stuff. And then you got to stay with that for a little while. And then it's going to feel like second nature. And you'll feel like you're getting back to your old self. And then you got to take the next step. I don't necessarily think doing everything all at once. Uh, well, for the most part, I don't think that's a good idea. Now, there are some people who can just do everything all at once, but it feels like a light switch to those people. Like it feels like that's it. I'm just going to do everything. You, I, I almost never say this because this is almost never the case. 99.9% .9 of people, terrible advice. Because of your history of exercise uh, and how consistent you've been and just hearing you talk, if you feel like that's you, if you feel like that's it, I'm just going to do everything, um, I would trust that from someone like you. I would never tell that to anyone else. But if you're like everybody else, um, one step at a time because feelings are going to pop up as you remove things that, you, you know, are kind of numbing you right now. Well, not only that, but you, and I, I, I like doing it, even with all of my experience, okay, this is how when I get back into my kick is, I, and I know like, okay, there's a list of things, okay, I got to stop the, the social drinking. Oh, I got to cut out the ice cream every other night. Oh, okay, I need to start walking more. Yeah. Okay, I need to be more consistent. I have the same list of things I know I need to do. I actually don't do them all at once. I just, because what I know is just simply by eliminating the alcohol or the ice cream, I'm already going to start to see changes and feel better yeah, further motivation and it's going to give yeah. me motive, mm -hmm. you know, momentum and i'm like oh man i haven't even dialed the other things in yet and so and then the next yep. week I, I i i attack the next thing and then the next week i attack the next and then you know you're six weeks down the road and you're you're finally addressing you know one of the last things on the list and the whole time you've been seeing this like nice little momentum so even with lots of experience i still like to personally attack my fitness goals in that manner of just attacking one thing at a time. Yeah, same here. Same here. So, I mean, that because, and especially because things 
are probably going to pop up that um, that are going to be challenging. Kemi, how was uh, when you did Cabral? Did, uh, do you remember, or did he, he go over magnesium with you at all? Because I'm thinking of like the like relaxing thing. So mine's not wine. Mine's smoking weed, which I also try and curtail if I feel myself being consistent with it. Uh, and a good old mellow drink, which is loaded full of magnesium and the theanine in it, and then like a chamomile tea or something. I tell you what, I get that feeling of relaxation. I don't know if you've tried that. Well, yet. maybe I can try that because they did. Um, he did prescribe, not, not prescribe, but on the supplement, they recommended uh, one of their magnesium supplements. Oh, and oh, I can't oh, remember which one damn. it is. And they said one to three, and I've been taking one. And so maybe I should uh, up that. Try, okay, if you haven't tried Mellow yet from Ned, one of our partners, okay. try that for me, okay? Try okay. that at, at night. It's a great little thing to drink at night and have that. And then if you also want like some chamomile tea, the combination of that has been unbelievable Tammy, for me. Tammy, because I, 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 I want to give you something, yeah. I'm going to send you a box of Ned, okay? So uh, why don't you email <laughs> her? Whoever you're talking to on our team, um, email them your address and we'll mail you. We got some in the back here. Yeah, we'll send you a little sleep, sleep pack. So I got a bunch of other stuff we'll send yeah, you I'll send. Yeah, I'll send some over to you. And uh, That's you know. awesome. Yeah, yeah, you got it. So one, one quick question on, I, I've been, um, I pay attention and um, I've, I've been up in my water. So I'm doing, you know, I, I'm adding things in rather than, you know, focus on taking things out yet. Love it. So I'm pro I, I think I need to focus on increasing the protein. So what should my protein goal be? Um, I would use lean body mass as your target. Okay. Yeah. So you said you, uh, how, well, like how, how much weight have you gained above what your typical body weight was when you were kind of working out and stuff? I had gained about 30 pounds and, and here it's just with the changes I've started, I've lost about five. Oh, so you've far. already lost five. Wonderful. I would go, I would hit the protein targets one gram per pound of target body weight. So what your body weight was when you felt really good, use that as your, as your protein target yeah, and go one okay. to one and go yep. one to one with yep. that. Okay. And make awesome. it and make it a personal goal to try and do it through Whole Foods. Only use the protein powders, bars, and shakes, and so that if you have to. But try and try and okay. do that Whole Foods if you can. You'll see better results that way. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right, Tammy. Make sure you give it's us your. Awesome. Make sure yes. Make sure you send back your ad your mailing address so we can send some. So we're gonna send some yeah. stuff to you. Okay, that's exciting. Thank you so much. You all got right. it. All right. Thanks Tammy. for calling in. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. You ever want to hug God, somebody? I love her. I just want to give her a big hug. I absolutely love what her. A, what an amazing uh, woman! I, I can't believe a, all the stuff that she. I got all with. choked up, dude. That's like the shit. Just, that, could you imagine? No. The, no, the, no. The order of that stuff, that. And the magnitude of that, and the and then she's all happy and chippery, like shit. Well, dude. she's got. Sounds like she's got a lot of uh, purpose in her life. You know, she works with these kids, and uh, I think that's what. Yeah. You know, keeps you going and keeps you moving it's forward. A big driver, but, yeah. But I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head, bro. That forty-year relationship with exercise, you cannot maintain that kind of consistency. Appropriate, I'd say, consistency with exercise without uh, developing wonderful character and becoming a better person. You just can't. At some point, you got to face certain things. You have to yeah. work through certain things and you really learn. And it takes a long time. Obviously, you can have a bad relationship with exercise, but that doesn't last 40 years. Uh, at some point, you got to figure it out. And I think that it's also what gave her the latitude to totally. kind of abuse herself. Totally. With and and then she, her blood work came back and she was good. Yes. Yeah. And that's because somebody else who's lived a more normal, say, life for the last, you know, 40 something years. Yeah. With no stress would have had probably poor blood markers. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so, yeah, that's such a testament to what she's done. So I'm excited for, I mean, she, and she, boy, talk about knowing, I mean, she was on with the MAPS 15, oh, yeah. what she needs to do yeah. protein her wise. Plan was already on point. Yeah, no, yeah. you could tell that uh, that she she knows what she's doing. Yeah, those are the kind of clients I used to like to train, not because I help them, but because I used to ask them questions. You yeah, know? and I'd work out with them and be like, "Well, they'd fill our cup back exactly." Up. I mean, just yeah, just her overall positive energy towards facing like totally these odds. Yeah, totally. Our next caller is Bree from Colorado. Hi, Bree. How's it going? Hi, guys. It's good to meet you. Hi. I'm happy to be Hi. here. Thank you. So my question was, how many times can I run anabolic back to back before I need to switch? I did it. I've done it three times, mainly because of hectic schedules and it's familiar to me. Um, so essentially, do you have to phase the phases? No. And it, you could almost run it indefinitely as long as you're doing something 
probably mobility wise yeah. to complement it because the only problem I think any of us have with running anabolic indefinitely, as far as like a results, like losing body fat, building muscle, you could do it forever for those reasons because the way it's phased. But what people tend to feel is issues with like their joints because so much of it is just the sagittal plane. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a lot of multi-planar stuff. We don't have any sort of mobility side built into side, there. Side rotational movement. Not a lot of thing. unilateral stuff involved in there. So it's so that so it's limiting because of that. Um, from a results perspective of building muscle, losing body fat, absolutely, it's programmed. You could run it over and over. But what I would recommend is that if you start noticing your joints talking to you. That's a sign that you either need to incorporate mobility or like the order that we wrote them for, which was MAPS anabolic, then performance. Performance really addresses all that stuff. Yeah, yeah and you can you can address that in the trigger session days as well. So if you wanted to replace like some with mobility uh, sessions like we have in MAPS performance or just like be more deliberate with body weight exercises where you're moving side to side and you're getting some rotation in there. Uh, that's one way to sort of address yeah. and handle it. Bree, let me ask you why you're asking this question. Why would you want to run it um, uh, consecutively over and over again? Well, uh, so I took a temporary job out of town where I'm working nights. Um, so I'm often up for over 24 hours. Um, and so on my days home, I essentially do the foundational workouts, like on the days I'm home back to back to back, like um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, instead of separating them. I haven't been great at the trigger sessions because of my work schedule. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know if there'd be something better for that, or yeah. I, I'm just... Stick with what I know. No, no. Okay. So this is more about a just familiarity and it works with your schedule. Simplicity, yeah. Type so of thing. if I could customize what you're doing, the this is what I would like. So and I'm gonna I'm gonna have Doug send you maps performance. And I think I have that one. Oh, you already have it. Okay. So uh -huh. what I would do is actually go one foundational day of anabolic, do a mobility day in between, and then do another foundational day of anabolic. Yeah, I wouldn't want to, yeah, I don't think you should do the three foundational days. That's why uh, back I, to back. I wanted to break it up with mobility. Yeah. So um, uh, how long have you been on this this schedule? Um, a few months and I'm only, I'm my contract's only till the end of June. So then I'll be able to go back and do uh, okay. like aesthetic or something as it's laid out. Oh, so, long. okay. So after June, then you'll <clears throat> be working a more normal schedule where you could work out, space them out type of deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Here's what I want you to do until June. I want you to do maps 15 because you're hammering your body with your schedule and you're probably already noticing that you're what, three months in you said? Uh, since December. So I guess a little bit more. Yeah. How are you feeling? Uh, tired. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Go maps 15, huh? This is, it's beating you up. Look, schedules like this, people don't realize just how demanding um, it is on the body. It's especially when your circadian rhythm is all totally thrown off. It's a major stress on the body. And I'm going to assume that your draw, your job is stressful anyway. Most jobs that you work those kind of hours are quite demanding. You mind if I ask what you do? I'm an ER nurse. Yeah, good God. Oh, wow. Yeah. You're doing mass 15. Yeah. You're not doing foundational work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mass 15. Like you're, 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 you're up at night, you work 24 hours, then you got three days off in a row, then you're back at it. Like you need to do mass 15 because uh, you're already taxing your body and you're just, you're, you're starting to feel it now three months in and it's, that means it's, it's probably, you got to back off quite a bit. After June, I would go give yourself like a month of like easy workouts and then go ahead and get back into MAPS anabolic. If you don't do what I say, your body's going to start talking to you uh, in big ways with hormone imbalances, um, anxiety issues. You know, you'll start if you aren't, if you aren't already noticing those things. Yeah. So I'm glad I asked you because, um, I mean, ER nurse, I've trained a few, a few of you guys. You guys are maniacs. So yeah. MAPS 15 is the way to go for now. Do you have that program? Uh, I don't. All right. I'm sending it to you. Okay. Thank you guys so much. You got it. Yeah. You got it. By the way, it looks easy, and, and it, but it's appropriate. And I'm saying this to you because I know your type. Mm -hmm. You love the stress. You love the cortisol. You love the excitement. So you're going to look at mass 15 and be like, I want to do something hard. No. Do mass 15. <laughs> Just yeah, stick yeah. with that. For Don't me. overdo it. Trust Think about it as you're doing it every day. So you're setting yourself Just up. Just 15 minutes. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank right. you. I'll trust it. I'll do it. Good. All right. All right. Thanks for calling. Have I, Thank that, you so much. You got it.
I ever did I ever share my girlfriend ER story? No. Right here? Oh, we'll do that. We'll do that sometime. Remind me. Oh, come on. Not right now. This is not a good time. Take too long. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll do it in like a a call. It's it's more of a funny story. It's not related to if it was related, it would help her. I would talk about it right now. It has nothing to do with that. You know what the irony is? Well, the crazy part about these uh, almost every job I've ever, every client that's ever worked a job where they work nights. Yeah. It's not only the stress of the nights, it's also a stressful job. It's almost never like an easy job. It's always I, yeah, it's, some I kind a, of a you're job put, that's- You're putting out fires everywhere. Yeah, I, had, I actually had to tell my girlfriend at the time to stop telling me her work, to, about her work, because it was stress stressing me out. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about it. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I mean, every night it was like, oh, some, dude, and I had that. some dude fell off the second floor yes. and landed on his head. And like, oh, some other yeah. dude drove a nail through his, his hand. Like, just everything was like crazy. I was like, yeah, uh, yeah I'm cool. Yeah, these kids <laughs> came in and, you know, there's this horrible accident. And I'm like, oh my god, I can't, you know, like yeah, yeah. I can't deal with this. Yeah, and two to, to her to her uh, testament, like she's in great shape. Like that's something like I want to keep promoting amongst nurses and, yes. and doctors. Like if you've been in the hospital in a while, man, there is not a lot of fit people uh, working there anymore. Which is you know something I like. I commend her for that, dude. Yeah. I used to train an oncologist, which is a stressful job as a doctor. You're working with dying people, okay? Yeah. And he smoked. <laughs> he was an oncologist yeah, who smoked That's and how I he dealt with the stress and so. he was embarrassed yeah. about it, but yeah. we talk about it and he goes, you don't understand. He goes, listen, I know smoking is like the number one cause of cancer and I'm a cancer doctor. <laughs> he goes, but my job is so stressful that I, I go outside and I smoke so I can go do my job. I'm like, I get it, bro. <laughs> yeah, I like I, I, I know, but I, but I get it. Like, I don't know how you could do something like that. So an ER doc, ER nurses and doctors, it's emergency after emergency. Yeah, no, it's like, it's not regular patients. It's you, like I'm dying. And it, it, a special yeah. person Adrenaline. does that job. Yeah. And so you hit it right. I'm glad you asked that because obviously my recommendation I would have changed had I known totally. the stressful job she's doing. Although I will say this, and I didn't want to say it after you said it because there was no reason to even go back and forth on it because your recommendation I think is better. Um, but you could modify what I said. Like if you're really good about, you could do an anabolic day that is a normal anabolic day. You could do a mobility day. That's really good for you. And then you could do like a very low intensity yeah. third day and actually make that work. But I you'd mean, have to really, you have to have very good self-awareness yes. and control yeah, of that yes. and that personality. I no. So once you, that's why I didn't say anything because I'm like, yeah. okay, she's probably going to be the person who leans more towards getting her, after it. Her so. normal Definitely. is everybody else is stressed out. So mm -hmm. she cannot gauge. She's not going to be able to gauge the right intensity. I know this. I've worked with people yeah, like no, this. You, were, and you, you tell you're, them, you're, just scale it down when you feel like yeah, you're yeah, a little yeah, tired. Yeah, you can't yeah. do it. You're scaling it down. Scale it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's fifth gear. That's it. <laughs> Our next caller is Xavier from Oklahoma. Hey, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, thanks, guys. Hey, Sal, Adam, Justin. I'd like to first off thank you guys for taking my call. I really listen to you guys a lot, like in between classes, when I'm working, stuff like that. Good deal. Sweet. So for context, I wanted to say that I've ran the RGB bundle a couple times. I've also ran map split and maps pilot twice. And my question I was want to ask you guys is um, like, how would you guys kind of make maps pilot more focused on the bench and kind of, cause like that's where I'm kind of having a hard time bringing it up. Okay, Ooh. Ooh, so yeah. your bench press seems to be stuck, but everything else is. Uh... God, it's a, you know, yeah. How much do you mess with that? Because it's so specific to increasing those lifts, those three or, lifts. The, you know what? I I actually think less of modifying power. The first thing that comes to mind to me is actually running something else, and then maybe including yeah. including like chest exercises going. that you don't do regularly or that are in there. Like yeah, get some unconventional. Well, hold on. He, he, options he's been there. working out for a while. What, what are your lifts, if you don't mind me? Asking? How much do you weigh? What's your deadlift, squat, and bench? So right now I'm weighing like around 182 right now. Um, my deadlift, I recently hit 505, oh, so. squat 440, and then bench is, it's kind of been kind of stuck at like 285. Okay. You're, you're pretty yeah, damn strong. Yeah, you are strong. Part of the reason why your, your <laughs> weights are stuck is because you're freaking strong dude, <laughs> yeah, yeah. for your body weight. So you're at a level now where- it's So incremental, dude. Especially for your size, yeah, like- yeah. It, everything's going to move slow now. I mean, you're hitting numbers for your body weight that um, that you know really really high. Like that's really yeah, good. Not, I can't hit any of those numbers right now. Yeah. So <laughs> so, so you're pretty strong. So bro. so here's what. So this is it's going to change now. My advice is going to change. I'm glad I asked you that because if you were if you weren't so strong, that would give you different advice. But because you're so strong, you're probably the areas that you're probably I don't know lacking or could improve upon probably have to do with stability and balance more than anything at your strength. 
Now, if your bench was like, you know, 185, I would just be like, keep focusing on your bench, you know, mm-hmm. add frequency, take it away from your deadlift, blah, blah, blah. But at that strength, there's probably something there that's preventing your body from adding another five or 10 pounds to the bench. And it's probably a mobility or stability thing is where I would guess. It's what hap- tends to happen. So let me ask you this. When you start to push your bench, do you notice anything in your shoulder, your elbow? Do you get any like in- pec insertion pain, your wrist, anything like that? Um, I feel like whenever I'm benching, my, my left shoulder might kind of roll a little bit forward right. more than my right. Okay. Map symmetry. I'm going to have you do, have you done map symmetry yet? Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah. That, do, no. do map symmetry. So like I said, at, at a certain point, like initially just getting stronger is just getting stronger at a certain okay. point. When you get to, when you start to get to big numbers, you're, it's like these things that are getting in the way have mm. more to do with your body's ability to like stable. It's like, okay. It's like you have a car and you can increase the horsepower, but at some point the tires spin, you can add all the horsepower you want. You're not going to go any faster. So then you got to look at traction. You got to look at, can I make the tire stick? Right. And so I can get you faster get into the fine tuning of it. For yeah. Sure. So I think okay. map symmetry will address some of that. Then go back into mass power lift and then see how you feel. I like that direction because what was on my mind, yeah. I was going to ask you uh, like how, because you're so power lift focused and getting the bench press up, would you say that you barbell press way more than you dumbbell press? Uh, right now, I've been kind of working in some dumbbell pressing because I I recognize that myself too. Yeah. So I've been kind of adding some dumbbell pressing. I haven't really done it for like I've only been doing it for like four weeks right now. So I probably should maybe stick more to it right now. That and you're you're gonna get into- yeah you're gonna get that in symmetry. So I, that's why I like Sal going that direction because I had a feeling that, that there's some opportunity there for you to get yeah. really good, and that's gonna address uh, that is gonna address mobility and stability stuff because you can go and yeah. go real deep. By the way, so. When you're when you're doing dumbbells all the way all the way down real deep to in, make sure you're doing incline. I love I love incorporating that. And then if there's any opportunity in areas like heavy weighted dips, um, I'm trying to think of like these movements that I remember when I was neglecting or I didn't have it and how it carried over to the bench. So looking for exercises that you kind of suck at that are for for that will help your chest strength and growth. Um, incorporating that. Uh, definitely the symmetry and the dumbbells yeah. are there. And then anything that you can think of that you probably could spend more time addressing versus just continuing to get good. You're probably really good at the barbell bench press because you've done it so yeah. long. For, for I think, yeah, I think it nails it in the head. I really think it's, um, if you if you spend the time to really address each individual joint and, and you know, you are able to kind of uncover any kind of uh, weakness there in the chain uh, that we can strengthen up and, and support you better when you get to that weight again. Because then if I had any advice as you're going back and kind of benching and, and you know, really getting after it, uh, some progressive kind of uh, resistance for me was, was helpful. And I know like with chains and bands, but even like a slingshot I've, I've used before, uh, I don't know if you've messed with around with that at all just to, to get me a little more acclimated to heavier weights and then kind of work my way through that but that's after we address you know the instability yeah for sure. xavier how old are you um 19 oh, oh my Jesus god Christ. bro you're that yeah. strong already i know yeah, yeah you got, all right so listen yeah, yeah, I, don't to, I don't even want to talk to you anymore no 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 you're doing no more advice no more advice hey it's because he listens to <laughs> oh he <laughs> we want him to be better than us no no listen listen i'm gonna say so i i figured you were young so i'm gonna say something to you because here's what's gonna happen okay you're going to do map symmetry and you're going to be like, I want to go lift heavy. You're going to do map symmetry and be like, this is boring. I want to go pound some heavy ass weights. Okay. Here's, here's the truth. That's phase four. Here's the truth. Could, uh, could I train, could I get a powerlifting coach to get your bench press to go up faster than if you did what I said? Yes. You could get your bench press to go up faster if you did like powerlifting techniques. Here's the problem. And you'll figure this out if, as you start to meet more powerlifters. They start to wrap their elbows, their wrists. Yeah. They start to lose mobility. They start to acquire injury after injury. So because you're so young, do it the way I'm saying it. You might progress a little slower right now, but ultimately you're going to hit bigger numbers as you get older. You got way, you got a lot of time, bro. You're 19. You're gonna, you're not gonna hit your peak in strength until about your early to mid thirties. Yeah. So you've got a long way to go. So don't do the like. like you'll need the artificial stability support. Like yeah. that's a hundred percent where that direction goes, and yeah. you'll see that with these guys. Yeah. Don't ignore little things because you're like, now nah, I just want to add another fifteen don't, pounds. Uh, to my don't bench. Larry wheels yourself. 
Yeah. 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 Or Lane Norton yourself. Yeah. He figured that out the hard way. So yeah. do what I said. It takes a little longer, but you'll get bigger numbers as you keep working out. And then you won't get to the point where I, you know, like I know powerlifters my age were like, yeah, I used to bench. Now I can't anymore. It's like, well, that sucks. So, <laughs> so yeah, map symmetry, it's not going to be what you're used to. Trust the process, get in the mindset, and then go back to powerlift and see what happens. I, I'm going to add one more thing that I would love love for you. And this is uh, mm -hmm. it's all the advice Sal saying, spot on. I would even one time run powerlift all dumbbell. As, get rid of the for bar for the bench press and just see how freaking strong you can get following the protocol. But instead of the barbell bench press, you're actually doing dumbbells and run a whole cycle like that. That's and then, a, yeah, you could do that later too. Yeah. yeah. And then come back to the, to, and then run it again, all barbell and see it, what you notice from that. I think right. that would benefit you. And because we're so young, we got so much time at some point, do that for yourself. Yeah. One more thing. Okay. Uh, one more thing I'm going to ask you, uh, what time do you go to bed at night? And what time do you wake up uh, on a regular basis? Be honest. Probably, I would say midnight and then waking up like around eight. Okay. So that's not bad. And that's consistent every single night? Uh, most nights, yeah. I mean, sometimes if I'm going out with my girlfriend and stuff like that, I might, you know, push it later at night, but okay. or I work in the morning and stuff like that. All right. That's not bad. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Good. Just do what I said. I think you'll be good. I have another question, kind of what Justin was talking about. If you guys have time, you're sure. too strong. No more questions for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> We're going to start giving you wrong advice now. No. <laughs> We're so whenever, you guys talking about. <laughs> whenever he was talking about like the bands and stuff, because I haven't worked with those. I haven't added that into mass power lift. I've added like heavy weighted dips and stuff like that. Cause I hear you guys talk about that. Okay. So I've incorporated some of those things, mm -hmm. but I was wanting to ask like, how would you guys maybe incorporate bands and the mass power lift? What I do like on the heavy day, just do like, how it is and then like on the hypertrophy day do like like with bands with resistance or maybe like a slingshot or maybe even add like a third day on bench like monday wednesday friday or something like that all right here's uh, here's what you're here's I what you can add, do that's for sure yeah here's what you could do don't do this though yeah until you do map symmetry right this okay. is yeah. after symmetry yeah because i feel after, like you're yeah. asking me a question because you don't i know do you know what we should do. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he's we're, gonna do we're this not giving this you. answer Bro, until you go do what we told you, you promise to us back. you're on video right yeah. now okay <laughs> yeah, he's smart kid. that's what i would do okay cool i'll do that but anyway yeah. so yeah. if i did do yeah. all right so here's how you would add bands you would add it you could actually add it to any of the workouts um, I would do it on the heavy yeah. workout um, days. Um, and you, what you'll find is you can add weight to the bar because of the progressive resistance. Yes. So it'll just That's it'll the change the weight. Especially the slingshot. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you'll feel that yeah. instant support and help too when you're at that yeah. bottom position. Yeah. But but it, it, bands um, are not going to be as long-term useful for you now. No. Now okay. let's get your body yeah. balanced out, especially at your strength. Okay. All right, man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, keep us posted, hey, bro. Guys. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear back from you in a couple months. Yeah, I'll give that dumbbell thing a try. Now, hit you guys up after that. We're going to uh, send you symmetry too, by the way. So that's that way you got it. Okay, thank you guys. All right, bro. You guys have a good day. You, you got too, it, man. Have a good one. Aren't you glad I asked Fucking him what his 19, lips were? <laughs> 19, dude. That's strong. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I know. Uh, yeah, hella so jealous. A little jealous. Yeah, hey, I so like, yeah. well, what I said, like I, I would love to see him just do a whole phase sure. of – eliminating the barbell going all dumbbell and seeing just how strong mm -hmm. sure that'd be a fun experiment well i th i was trying to think back of being young guy and like the thing of, of course i think we've all been in a, a phase of our life where like we just cared about getting the bench press yep. up and the things that really move the needle i remember heavy dips being that way yeah. i do remember going on a phase where like i just said i'm eliminating the barbell right. and i'm gonna get hella strong on the dumbbells i got really good at dumbbells came back initially was not as strong on but the barbell it. but then i passed it yeah. and yeah. so I think he would he would really benefit from symmetry for sure, which you're going to get that dumbbell unilateral work. So of course, I think that's a great recommendation. And then I'd even run power lift and get rid of the the barbell yeah. and 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 include a dumbbell. Now, now I'm going to say this because I know I know right now there's some power lifters and power lifting coaches who are like dumb, stupid advice. Yeah. You should do. You stick with the bench only and get mastered. Here's the deal: yeah. like power lifters, I'm talking to you. You guys are performance driven. You're competition driven. You can, yes, he can definitely get stronger faster by following your advice, but he's 19 and he doesn't want, or I don't want him to end up like you where yeah. now you're, you got all these nagging injuries and shit. So 
the SD He's advice building it. a support system that's right. intrinsically. That's what, and at his age, think about this right now. If you're watching this and you're a powerlifter, powerlifting coach, if you could go back in time, what do you think you would have done? Yeah. Knowing what you know now, that's right? What I, that's yeah, why I look at the, you all wrapped up and, and wearing shirts <laughs> yeah, and like elastic the, That's shit. why I made the Larry Wheels comment. I mean, that's a young guy who's yeah. been that's moving like that. And if he's not doing no mobility work and stuff like that or yeah. unilateral shit. I mean, the guy is just on a on a on a mission to get stronger and stronger, stronger and you right. can. And then eventually you you blow you out blow your suspension. Out. You yep, know? Yep, yep. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 